Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Based on where the glands secrete, there are two types of glands. Exocrine glands and endocrine glands. So the first one is exocrine glands. Exo, exo means outside. Okay, so these are the glands which secrete their products directly into the apical surface. I told you, right, there are two ways they can secrete, they can uh, give their secretion. One is they can directly give it into the blood and the second is they can give it into the apical surface. Now those glands which secrete their products into apical surface are called exocrine glands. So these are basically tube-like structure that connect, there are tube-like structures which connect these glands to the apical surfaces and those tube-like structures are called ducts. So here ducts are present. So example of such glands are sweat glands, oil glands and salivary glands. As I said sweat on the screen surface, saliva is again on the oral cavity so there it is secreted. So these are also known as duct glands because ducts are present to connect them to the body surfaces because it is something like let us suppose the gland is present somewhere here but the body surface is here. So if this gland is secreting something and it wants to secrete it on the body surface so in that case there has to be a tube like structure so that it can give it secretion here. So this tube like structure is nothing but a duct. Right? So sweat glands or salivary glands. So here you can see the salivary glands. See, it is located here. But here you have ducts and then the secretion is produced here. Correct? Okay. The next type is endocrine glands. So now it is very obvious that these are ductless glands. That means there are no ducts involved here. So where do they secrete? These are those glands which secrete their products directly into blood. So now since it is secreting into blood, you do not re need to reach to the surface because ducts were needed to connect it to the surface. But now you don't need to connect it to the surface, just secrete it there itself into the blood and then blood will take care where to take it and all those things. So endocrine, endo means inside. So these are ductless glands, connection lost with the body surfaces, no ducts. They exist as isolated blocks of tissues. So they just exist individually. There is no need of any connection to the body surface or anything. So examples of such endocrine glands are thyroid, pituitary, hypothalamus, pineal. These are all endocrine glands. I mean, we, we talked about endocrine system, right, in our class 10th. So there we saw the function of each of the all the endocrine glands together form the endocrine system and they play a very important role in the control and coordination system of our body. Now we will not get into the detail of each of these endocrine glands but for now you should just have this idea what is exocrine gland and what is endocrine glands. Okay. So these are some of the examples of endocrine glands. So thyroid whenever we say it is present near the neck. Other than that, hypothalamus, pituitary, pineal, they are all present in some other, other part of the brain. If you want to learn about these in detail, please refer videos of class 10. So let us have a quick comparison between endocrine and exocrine glands. Endo means outside, exo means, I mean sorry, endo means inside, exo means outside. So inside means inside the blood. Exo means outside, out on the body surface. So endocrine glands secrete chemical substances that travel through blood to specific target organs. Whereas exocrine glands secrete chemical substances that travel through tubes to the target organs. And that is why these are ductless glands whereas these are glands without with ducts. Examples of endocrine glands are pineal, thyroid. Examples of exocrine glands are salivary, sweat. So let us now talk about hormones because talking about glands without talking about hormones is like an incomplete study. So let us see what are hormones because we saw that hormones, enzymes, metabolites, these are the things which the glands produce. But let us discuss about hormones in a little more detail because they are something very, very important. So these are secreted by endocrine glands. They are carried by blood 
so blood will carry them because they are secreted only by the endocrine glands not by exocrine so if it is secreted by endocrine means it will be secreted in the blood so blood has to transport it to different body parts so they are chemical messengers as i mentioned before also and they act on specific target organ it is not that they'll just go and uh, communicate to any organ it, it has to go to a specific target organ so it is going to be something like this if i say they are chemical messengers they basically carry signal or information from one cell to another so it moves from area of production to area of action so the hormones are produced where they are produced by the endocrine glands so that is its area of production but it is to move to to a target organ so that is its area of action so these hormones move from area of production to area of action and what is a target organ that i already explained these are nothing but specific cells so how do they recognize the uh, target cells they this is recognized by the associated cell membrane which is also referred as target tissues or receptors okay now let us suppose now let us suppose here in this picture let this these are all cells now let us suppose this is the hormone secreting cell okay so now let us suppose this cell secretes hormones for example now let us suppose these dots represent nothing but hormones and let us suppose these are the target cells this is a target cell this is a, it is not necessary that all the hormones will target one particular cell now each of them might target different different cells now these target cells will have something called target receptors or target tissues there is something called like that now this is your blood now these hormones will start flowing with blood now suppose when it reaches here suppose this particular hormone recognizes this receptor and it moves towards it so this hormone's target cell was this one so it just goes there again it starts flowing again some hormones find that their target cell is here so they come here again the remaining hormone keep on flowing to search for their target organ so basically how do the hormones recognize their target organ with the help of the target tissues or the target receptors so that is how hormones act and that is how they they that is why they are known as chemical messenger because this was their area of production and this is their area of action so they move from area of production to area of action by means of blood now blood is circulating throughout our body correct so since blood is circulating throughout our body the transport of hormones is also taking place throughout our body because blood is carrying hormone with itself so to different parts of the body wherever whichever hormone is required they'll go and they'll go to the their specific target cells and that is how hormones act or hormones function in our body now another important point to be noted about hormone is that they generally get destroyed after their job is done for example here this hormone found its target cell is it went to its target cell it it did it does a job and once that is done it will it will get destroyed so the hormone will get destroyed it doesn't live for a long time it only lives till its job is not done once done it gets destroyed on its own and new hormones get produced by the endocrine glands right so that is the concept of a hormone so now you must be understanding we use this term hormone very frequently right we say that there are some male specific hormones there are some female hormones for example in in males and right now i'm talking about human beings in human male you would have seen that there are certain features which are very characteristic to men they are not present in female for example the presence of a mustache a presence of beard or presence of hair on over the chest so all those things are very much characteristic of a ma male and not a female that is because of the presence of the male hormones so those hormones are secreted only inside the body of a male and that too that hormone gets secreted only at a certain age 
only for a certain period of time right whereas in case of females there are some different set of female hormones like estrogen and progesterone which gets secreted and because of which females again have different types of characteristics which are not present in males right so they, these are all hormones there are many other hormones anyways okay so we will not get into the details of different types of hormones now so these hormones should also be present in desired quantities neither more nor less as i was telling just now now if the presence of say the male hormone is too much if too much of male hormone then whatever is required is present again that can have adverse effect on the body similarly if very less of it is present again the male characteristics will not appear properly in that person so it has to be present in the right quantity thank you Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.